Address something that you've talked about in your notes, and that is we keep seeing the equities markets, particularly S&P, going up and up and up. At the same time, yields are coming down and down and down. Is this sustainable? Yeah, I mean, it is a certainly an unusual configuration, right? If you just look, like, very simply at where the S&P 500 is trading relative to its one-year range, uh, it's at the 100th percentile right now because it's at a new high, by definition. Uh, that's the 100th percentile. Uh, the 10-year Treasury yield is at the zero percentile. So it's, it is about as extreme as it can mathematically get. Um, and that doesn't happen very often. Usually they're somewhere in the middle or they're kind of in, in the same place with rates rising and stocks doing well. And you know, the last time we were in this position actually was 2016, where uh, when the S&P was trying to break out of its range um, and uh, the 10-year Treasury had just bottomed at 1.3% and then ended up going to, to three and a quarter percent last year. Uh, uh, so I, usually uh, in, in this kind of scenario, the bond market catches up to the stock market. And that wouldn't surprise me uh, if that were to happen again. That's a very big call, actually. Basically, that's saying that bond yields have to rise substantially at a time when there's nearly $13 trillion of negative yielding debt. Investors are taking uh, near record levels of duration risk, basically poised to have the biggest losses tied to any increase in benchmark rates. And yet, that is the base case scenario, in your opinion, that you're saying is likely to happen, more likely than a sell-off in equities. Am I getting that right? Um, yes. Uh, and, you know, if the Fed and the ECB were not poised to um, ease policy again, uh, I would maybe be of a different uh, uh, opinion. But, you know, when you look historically, when the Fed has started an easing cycle, and we don't know if this is the start of an easing cycle yet, of course, we do know that the Fed is very likely to cut rates a couple of times, and maybe those are just insurance cuts that don't amount to a full cycle. But when the Fed starts cutting rates after having raised them, and the probability of a recession is low as it is today, at least when you look at it, you know, sort of mathematically, uh, our, our team uh, thinks that the, the, the odds of recession is only about 3% right now. Um, when that has happened, uh, the market most of the time goes up, and it goes up actually by a fair amount. But we have to offset that with this whole uh, trade situation. And, you know, as, as your previous uh, reporter said, you know, basically uh, nothing happened in, uh, in, in Osaka other than uh, a, a ceasefire, but that doesn't make the, the two sides get any closer, you know, over the long term. So I weigh the, po the positives of the Fed possibly being able to reflate the system, which would drive equities higher, um, uh, juxtaposed against, you know, ongoing trade tensions, which would should drive the P.E. lower. And so it's a very binary, uh, high dispersion outcome, and that gives me fairly low conviction about really about anything right now in terms of direction.